We're in Iwate Prefecture in Kyuji City. It's probably about 20 degrees Fahrenheit right now. I woke up to take photographs of how beautiful everything is. So, you can follow me. So, I'm staying in uh, this cabin right here on this side. And we have to walk through a lot of snow to get there. There are these paths carved out. And this is a place structure covered in snow, but right over there, they have the traditional bullfighting. In the cold winter, there's nothing better than a hot bowl of udon made from scratch. We're up in a remote town in the Iwate Prefecture of Japan, staying at a local family's house. Our host grandparents, as they've lovingly named themselves, are fishermen by trade. And in the warmer months, they go out on their boat to catch everything from octopus to small fish, and they even harvest their own seaweed straight from the sea. Today, I will show you how to make udon from scratch and how they do it in the remote Japanese countryside, or in this case, seaside. Wheat flour, water, and salt is all it takes to make this udon dough. It's very firm, so we're going to knead it a lot. In fact, the dough is so firm and springy that we are going to be using an ancient technique called stuffing it in a bag and then stepping on it with our feet. Make sure you double bag the dough and you're wearing nice clean socks because no one wants their udon tasting like stinky feet. <laughs> this is me and my really cool space socks and I am rotating around to give it a nice even finish. We want to make everything as flat as a pancake. I feel like it would be really weird to walk into a pizzeria and they were doing this with their pies, but you know what, it really works well for the udon with the dough being so thick and hard to manage. Ryoko, our host grandmother, took the nice flat disc to her homemade cutting board and is now pulling it along this large wooden rolling pin. The goal here is to make the dough even flatter, so we're going to keep stretching it along the rolling pin in both directions to get an even and thin layer of noodles. Being from Los Angeles, I was most impressed by how self-reliant they are, and I felt like I was living the Japanese cottagecore dream. They made the cutting board and the knife you see in this video from scratch. They grow green tea leaves and cantaloupes in their backyard, along with a variety of vegetables we'll be incorporating into this udon today, including giant green onions. They harvest their own salt from the sea as well. Making something completely from scratch allows us to slow down and really grow appreciation for the process and the work that goes into having something that seems as simple as a bowl of udon. It feels relatively simple eating a bowl of tempura udon in a restaurant, but when you're kneading the dough, standing next to people who harvested the salt, and the kombu or seaweed for the broth, and the fish as well, you grow an intense appreciation for everything that goes into cooking your dinner. And because of the board, she couldn't come back until the turkey. Mm -hmm. Now that the udon dough has been thinned, Ryoko is gathering it up on the side here to create layers and this is going to help us achieve long, nice noodles. Staying with our host family has been quite an amazing experience because I feel like I've gotten a true glimpse into what it's like to live in Japan. Especially because we're outside of Tokyo, we're very far up north in the Iwate prefecture. It's a very special glimpse that you don't normally get to see when you're just here sightseeing. I feel like I've gotten to really live here. We're so fortunate that they share their traditional family recipes, and it's really nice to stay somewhere that has a slower pace of life. It makes me really want to practice more simple and slow living when I get home. When you're stacking the udon dough on top of itself, you want to make sure to put ample flour sprinkled between the layers, because once it gets rolled out, the udon dough gets really sticky, and it'll make it a lot easier to separate the noodles once you cut them. We're making a lot of udon bowls today, I mean like over 25, so we're naturally going to do this process many different times. I really enjoyed this step of separating the udon noodles and untangling them. It's incredibly fun to kind of shake the noodles around and then place them down on the tray once you're done. 
And here, Ryoko's teaching me how to cut the udon dough so that I get thin noodles. The knife is actually a lot thinner than it looks, so it's a little bit unwieldy at first, especially with how thick this is. <laughs> it felt like cutting into Play-Doh. And I wanted to make sure the noodles were thin enough, but not too thin that they would cook unevenly. Another really cool thing about our host family, besides the fact that our host grandpa literally made this knife from scratch as a wedding present for his wife, is that in their town, they actually trade their neighbor's fish for different products. So we got to try these delicious and huge Japanese apples from Tokyo, one of those very fancy fruit shops, and they exchanged some fish for it. So super nice that they cut it up and we all got to gather around the dining table and try some. It was the most delicious, juicy apple I've ever had in my life, and they were huge, like the size of a softball. Being fishermen, they also feed the stray cats outside quite regularly and take in some as pets. They also had a very cute Shiba Inu. We kept repeating this process to make more noodles than I've ever seen in my entire life in one place. Also, I'll take the time to tell you a bit about where we're staying. Kuchi City is an amazing town. It's best known for its amber deposits, dating back to the Jurassic period, and also its abundance of birch trees. There are ski resorts in the area as well, and in the summer there are female sea divers who dive all the way to the depths of the sea to harvest uni and other cool seafood staples like mollusk and seaweed. Now we're about an hour bus ride from Kuchi City itself, and I've actually been appointed an honorary tourism ambassador of Kuchi City. So. While this isn't an ad, I do really love Kuchi City, especially because their mayor and um, everyone in Kuchi City, especially our host family, is so kind and welcoming. Here we're cleaning off the green onions that they grew in their garden. I mean, look at the size of these things. They're so fresh, completely delicious, and super crisp. Please comment your favorite Japanese dish or your favorite restaurant where you like to get udon because I really would love a good hot bowl of udon right now. Usually I go to Marugame Udon, which is in Los Angeles. It's pretty delicious and they have good prices, but I don't think anything will ever beat this bowl of udon we're putting together. Ryoko is rinsing off the cooked udon noodles, probably to get starch off of it. These are just so delicious. They're springy and kind of like how homemade pasta has a different texture and a different like mouthfeel. That's how these udon noodles tasted and felt when you're eating them. We just have to strain out bowls and bowls of noodles. And now we're getting to the very exciting part. Like the Avengers, it is time to assemble. And this time we're assembling some fresh, yes, home-caught seafood tempura some also home pickled foods and these are grocery store bought crab <laughs> and if you're anything like me you really love the toppings on a bowl of udon perhaps even as much as the noodles and the soup broth i think toppings really make or break an udon oh my goodness now we are assembling all the bowls we must have made around like 30 complete bowls so they made a lot of tempura for us and we made a lot of noodles together our host grandmother Ryoko prepared all of this tempura the day before including sweet potato tempura and octopus tempura and there were a lot of assorted vegetables as well the amount of work that went into this was just <laughs> astonishing. <laughs> This is some of the best tempura I've had in my entire life, besides the tempura I had in Portugal. And if you're interested in some Portugal food vlogs, I have a lot coming out. But tempura is actually Portuguese. The Catholic missionaries from Portugal brought tempura to Japan and showed them the Western style cooking method, which they coated the foods in flour and then fried them up. Cooking dishes from scratch really gives us the time to talk and have conversations as we prepare a meal, which I really enjoyed. 
Despite us being Japanese American, a lot of us in the group don't actually speak Japanese. So we're doing our best to translate between our host family and ourselves. And this trip made me really want to focus on studying Japanese. I never got to really learn it growing up, and it's definitely a big regret of mine. So I'm going to start working really hard to learn Japanese. Um, but it was definitely amazing to see more of my culture. So big thank you to the Kakahashi Project for allowing me to go on this homestay program. Next we're adding broth to the udon bowls and a delicious part of this broth is that it's been seeping with that kombu straight from the sea and also mushrooms as well. It was incredibly earthy, there's a great umami flavor and it really activates the oil and the tempura. So while the tempura at the top is very crispy, you could still taste the broth seeping in. And here is the best bowl of udon I have ever had completely made from scratch. We say itadakimasu before the meal, and that translates to like, I humbly receive. So it's acknowledging how much effort goes into every meal that you eat, from the farmers picking the wheat flour to, you know, someone making tempura from scratch. And then Ryoko showed us how to put on yukata, which are like these summer kimonos, and it was just such an amazing day.